Hello, this is John Buck, and I'm here to do a short tutorial on what linearity means and how to prove it for a sample system. And the idea of a linear system is that if I have scaled versions of the input, if I have a normal input of x of n, and I put it into a linear system, I get some output y of n, and then I later, or if I then put a scaled version that's been ramped up by some constant amount a, the output will be scaled up by the same amount. And in fact, if I think of, well, maybe I have a couple of inputs, maybe I'll call this one x1 and this one y1. I have a different output, a different input-output pair, x put, I put an x2 and I measure that y of 2 comes out, and then I come back I say, well, what if I put in a new input that's the sum of both of these inputs? Then the output needs to be the sum of the two outputs I measured before. This is known as the scaling property, and this is known as the additive property. For linear system. So to prove a system is linear, I need both scaling and additivity to hold. So, and we saw went through a process for doing this in class, but I thought I'd work through one more example. And again, our example system is going to be the modulator, a system that comes up often in communication systems, where my output y of n is equal to my input x of n, that's then going to be multiplied by a cosine omega naught n. And we looked at the time invariance property of this in a different video. You can go watch that one if, if you want to see how the, whether the system is time invariant or not and how we prove that. But for linearity and added, uh, linearity we need additivity and scaling. So let's start with scaling. I'm going to say well if I had a different out different input f of n and the output were g of n then that output g of n would be the new input f of n times cosine of omega naught n. And then the key question, and again I'll put this in red as I did in the time invariance video, is for linearity, or for scaling rather, if this new input f of n is a scaled version of the old one, is g of n, the new output, equal to a scaled version of the old output, which is a y of n. We're going to check through that. In order to do that, well, one, we're going to need more space, but we need to find, again, an expression for both g and a y of n in terms of the, uh, the original input x of n. So if I go on to the next page, we say, well, a y of n it's going to be just multiplying that first definition of the system. So it would be a times x of n times cosine of omega naught times n. And meanwhile, we'll say, is that equal to g of n? Well, we know g of n is f of n cosine omega naught n. And then we say, well, we were assuming f of n to test scaling f of n is equal to a x of n. All right, so we get this, just to remind you, if we go back to the previous page, by taking this bit here, bringing it over to our new page, right, and putting it in here for f of n, and that gives us this. And now I look at these two things here, I compare these two things here, and those are equal, right? So since we can say, oop, wrong color. So, since g of n is equal to a times y of n, scaling holds. Right, so we're halfway home to linearity. To do the other thing we need is additivity. 
So let's start that on a new page. So for additivity, we're saying we need two inputs, and then we need to add them. So we're going to say if y1 of the n is the input, I'm sorry, the output, when x of n, x1 of n is the input, I'll get this equation, right? x1 of n gets modulated. I have a different input, x2 of n. Well, it also gets modulated to make y2 of n. And then the third case, I say, well, I have a different input, f of n. And that gives me a new input, g of n. And I, you know, I've been bad. I should have labeled this at the start. I'm going to sort of do it down the side here. This is proving additivity. Okay, so this is what we do to prove additivity. So again, our key question here. If this new input, one of these inputs, f of n, is the sum of the other two. So if f of n is x1 of n plus x2 of n is g of n equal to y1 of n plus y2 of n. So again, to figure out if this is the case, we need to find both a way to get both the g and the sum of y1 plus y2 in terms of something common we can compare, which is x of n. So again, let's start with y1 of n plus y2 of n. We can just get that from up above. It's going to be x1 of n cos omega naught n plus x2 of n cos omega naught n. Right, so y1, we just grabbed from up here. I guess I can use the little laser pointer app. So to get y1 of n, I took this equation here. To get y2 of n, I took this equation here. I bring them both down here and plug them in, and I get this expression for y1 plus y2. Now, we go on for g of n. We say, well, g of n, we head up above, is f of n times cosine omega naught n. And to get f of n, we go again to back up a page. We get f of n, oops, no, I didn't have to back up a page, my mistake. From the key question right here, I take this piece right here and plug it in for f of n. And I'll get, so f of n, I can sort of identify that for you. So I'm say, taking this stuff here, bringing it down here, and plugging it in for f of n. And so when I do that, I get x1 of n plus x2 of n times cosine of omega naught n. And if I look at these two for a minute, I say, well, these are the same, right? Algebraically, I can distribute the cosine through, and I'd have x1 times cos plus x2 times cos. So if I compare these two, these are equal. So that's good. A little smiley face here. So to wrap that up, we'd say if our sense g of n is equal to y1 of n plus y2 of n, the system is additive. And so we've proven both parts, and since we've got additive, and scaling, that's, proof, that's what we need to prove linearity. Okay, so again, backing up to review what we started with, the first page, the idea of linearity is to prove it, we need both the scaling property, which says if I take the input and scale it by a constant, I get the same output scaled by a constant. And then if I take two inputs and add them, I do the the new output is the same as adding the two old outputs. We go through and prove those both in general and end up in saying, well, I, when I've proven both, I have proven linearity. If I only prove one but not the other, I'm not done. I can't prove it for a specific input or output. right? The other helpful thing when proving linearity is if you fail one of the two, if you fail additive, 
it's not going to be linear. You don't even need to check scaling. So that's usually why if I'm not sure, I'll check additive first, because it's usually simpler to check that one. Okay, thank you.